Hello, one and all. Welcome back to Arcade Inspiration. My name is Cilantro. Today's rolls are 1, 3, and 5. I believe yesterday's rolls were 1, 5, and 10, so we should only have one job to change. So let's see what we got here. 1, 3, 5. So it is Battle Rage, Occultism, Songcraft. Hmm. And you don't hit cancel to change jobs. And that makes us into a Lawbreaker. Well, I know what Dream Breaker is. This is apparently a lore breaker. Okay, well, let's uh, break some lore. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this time around. Um, previous videos, you've probably heard me say that I come up with a few different potential builds for a single, you know, spec. So I'll say, oh, you know, this has potential, this has potential. Well, I want to actually show off two variations of this. Um, as always, this is kind of a quirky build. It's likely not super viable, but, you know, not really the point of the video series. The point of the video series is to have fun and see what all is out there, so... Let me show you take one of the lore breaker. We're focusing mostly on occultism, damage, and passives uh, with Battle Rage support and CC in addition to Songcraft having some extra support and CC. Um, you know, Stun followed up by Critical Discord for a spammable attack that increases critical rate as well as charming, uh, or rather, rather as well as fearing a target that has been charmed. Uh, Bloody Shanty used for damage boost and attack speed boost as you've seen, uh, almost like a damage trinket in previous videos of mine. Uh, crippling Mire and Absorb Life Force uh, form a good chunk of the damage potential. Very good magic scaling, which synergizes very well with Frenzy. Uh, Frenzy boosting your magic and melee attack plus 30 every time you receive damage. Uh, I believe stacking up to 10 times, so quite a huge boost to damage, actually. One of the highest damaging caster builds I've ever experimented with involves Battle Rage and, of course, using Frenzy. Um, it's very dangerous to do so, and there are some ways to help mitigate that, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But uh, just to be noted that Frenzy is potentially quite powerful. We pick up Urgency here, uh, not only for the synergy between it and Frenzy, although it does have a 5-second cool, uh, cast time, but because it also provides... Uh, Crippling Mire is almost like a spammable attack. Uh, you can continually cast this over and over again. This is much better in group play, uh, when you have the bleed most likely inflicted, the stun, uh, triggered as well. Certainly powerful stuff. Since there are so many channeled abilities here, uh, some of the things that only work if you don't move, like for example, over, overpowered spell locus only works if you stand still, uh, it's inherently going to be activated almost every time that you're actually, uh, uh, channeling it. Um, one of the important things about this build is Bond Breaker, not only uh, just to remove crowd control, but because of the 50% damage decrease that you take for physical attacks. This will help you deal with the amount of damage you'll be taking from physical attacks from Frenzy. Likewise, we're taking dual wield proficiency here to be able to parry uh, ranged attacks, uh, comboing well with Battle Focus, which gives us a much higher parry chance. When you're Frenzied... You don't actually take the physical de defense reduction until you actually deal damage. And one of the problems with this build is that almost everything that it does, it does, it deals small amounts of damage very quickly. So, for example, Mana Force actually ticks like six times in a very short amount of time. So it'll very quickly drain your physical resist uh, resistance, which is unfortunate, but it's a calculated risk. You know, Frenzy is a really great ability, especially if you can manage to get it off with Urgency because... Urgency completely negates the draw. The one of the two major drawbacks of Frenzy in that it stuns you uh, for four seconds after the uh, after the Frenzy wears off. So against casters, this is pretty much a pure upside uh, boost to your damage. You're going to have 300 more magic attack than you otherwise would. I mean, my build is pretty defensive. Rather, my gear setup is pretty defensive. So my 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 magic attack is only 313. So in my case, it's almost well, it's yeah, it's almost doubling my magic attack. Um, but that's because I'm not particularly geared as an offensive caster. Um, uh, you know, otherwise we have Reckless Charge. This only triggers on the usage of charge, but extra mobility is always good. You could probably drop it in favor of, say, Precision Strike, maybe Terrifying Roar. Um, you don't really want to be in melee too much with this build. Precision Strike is more there, would be more there just for an increase in burst if you really wished. Um, I would imagine the amount of damage you could do with fr full Frenzy stacks with a Precision Strike would be pretty darn high up there, especially considering how well this scales, but... Um, just like most builds, this build could definitely use for another five points when the level cap is increased. Um, you know, again, typical CC chainable stuff right here. And I'll show you a very quick combo just to show what this build can actually do on my friendly neighborhood giant. So we're going to open up with a startling strain while that is flying towards the target. We are going to approach the target using bloody shanty, followed up with a charge. Uh, the charge should be la uh, lashing out just about when startling strain is going to hit, giving us plenty of time to follow up with a triple slash. We're going to follow that up with Sunder Earth into Whirlwind Slash to get another trip. Uh, immediately do a Hell Spear. 
and then Critical Discord, which will uh, inflict a good chunk of damage as well as fearing the target because of the aforementioned charm. And then with fear, Mana Force does a lot more damage, knocking the target away, and then you can follow up with whatever other damage options you want, Crippling Mire, uh, Absorb Life Force. So what you have here is, if you were playing this in a group, this is a good suite for sort of counter-initiating on somebody. You have a decent amount of lockdown. So if anybody jumps into your party, you can do all this. Keep them locked down, CC them a lot, and then push them away as a final uh, blow for Mana Force. Get them back out of your midst, forcing them to uh, you know get back into the thing. And if they don't have any mobility options, then Crippling Mire will make that significantly harder. Uh, as you can see, it is a pretty massive uh, boost to, uh, um, or a pretty massive reduction, rather, of uh, move speed. So we're just going to go through the combos here real quick. As I mentioned, you can do that. Get that into the charm, and then Mana Force the target away, dealing a large amount of damage, and... If you immediately start walking away, it works pretty well as well. Mana Force is kind of interesting because it, it's it's a very fast casting spell. It's it's really hard to explain unless you actually experience it. Oh, we're getting the whole good old immune glitch when they are on the side of a hill. Hey, I'm right here, giant. Whatever, I'll just run away from him. Um, it's one of those abilities you have to kind of experience to really get a feel for it because it, it's it it plays differently, and I can't really put in words exactly how it plays differently. That's all I gotta say. Um, so that's pretty much all I had to say for this take of the build. So let me switch my abilities over and get over to the other take of the build, which I think may actually have some true viability, especially at level cap 55. Alrighty. Um, this was a pretty pleasant surprise. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. This is a pretty darn pleasant surprise. Not only does what I was thinking work uh, would work, work really well. I mean, it actually works better than I thought. Um, again, viability, another question, but... Let me just show you what I got here. So, we switched things around for the second part of this. Uh, still picking up Frenzy from Battle Rage. Uh, the same occultism package. We still want the AoE stun. We still want Absorb Life Force and Crippling Mire. You could definitely change things around. But occultism is not quite as important for this particular take on the build, with the exception of for urgency. And it's insanely good damage passives, critical rate, and all that kind of stuff. Songcraft is picked up here instead as a support element. Quick step. Ode to Recovery, Bloody Shanty, Bulwark Ballad, standard defensive and offensive stuff that works really well. Now, all these different spells have one interesting effect that goes with them, and that is if a target is charmed by Startling Strain, then every offensive or otherwise useful spell that you inflict will deal offensive capabilities, or rather, will debuff the target that you're hitting with it. So uh, once you've increased the radius of your songs to 20 meters, any target within 20 meters uh, that you have charmed will be slowed while you're performing Quick Step. We'll have a dot applied to them while you're performing Ode to Recovery. Uh, we'll have a massive physical magic defense reduced uh, because of Bulwark Ballad. And also uh, reduce their attacks by 20% from Bloody Shanty. So these are great debuffs and there's nothing super special about this. Uh, typical hard support Songcraft builds. Go for this package and of course use Startling Strain. The difference here is, well there's a few differences. Firstly, Frenzy, if you remember right, uh, reduces your physical defense every time you damage an enemy. Now, the interesting part about this is that it does not actually trigger when you're using Ode to Recovery. So you can be playing this and inflicting a damage over time ability with Ode to Recovery while you are frenzied, taking all the damage with none of the downsides. So what ends up happening, if I could steal a giant here, looks like my, my man Winks here has been stealing him, so I'll just head somewhere else to keep talking for a little bit. So what happens is you stack up your magic attack massively from Frenzy, 300 more in fact, uh, including whatever other magic attack that you have. And while you're inflicting this dot, all of these damage passives are triggering. Because if you've seen me play this build, this style of build before, uh, with Songcraft and Occultism, which I'm pretty sure I've gotten a few times, anytime I heal myself and it crits, it has a chance to trigger Reprisal Intensified Harm. So we're looking at 20% extra critical damage here, 50% extra critical damage here, and 150%, or sorry, 75% extra critical damage here from Zeal. So the pure boost to critical damage is pretty insane, and it's very noticeable. If you were in a group situation and you had multiple targets charmed because of other people having Songcraft, you could do some massive damage just by playing your songs, while also being a hard support for the rest of your group. So if I actually cast all of my different songs here, keeping these up, you'll see the damage start to pour in as soon as I do the last one here. 848, 848, 848, 2215, 864. Just constantly applying a pretty massive uh, damage boost. And this isn't even with Frenzy on. This is just regular 
uh, damage output. And keep in mind that yes, this is against a mob, so the amount of damage that I would do uh, otherwise is much would be much lower. However, because of some of the other properties of the songs that you're playing, for example, the one that decreases physical and magic, magic damage on, char on charm targets, your overall DPS will actually still be pretty reasonable against enemies uh, who are actually of your level. So let me show that off again once more, this time with Frenzy, and you can see what kind of a real difference it actually makes. Um, and the best part is this is all sort of supplemental stuff. You're, you're doing this while in the sort of package of a hard support here. So more or less you're, av you're available to do these sort of hard support functions. And then if you need to, you can also turn off to, uh, to, to actual damage stuff, relying on the you know, remaining cooldowns of everything that you have going. So I'm just going to stand still here. And just to prove, I am taking hits and I am dealing damage technically. Um, but otherwise, I'm not really doing anything. So yeah, we're getting 1,450 or so non-crit, 2318 crits, uh, although Zeal had just worn off. So let me see if I can maybe trigger Zeal again. Actually, my songs just wore off, so let's try this again. It looks like the charm's about to go as well. Nice thing as well is you can actually cast Startling Strain while you're singing, and it doesn't interrupt your songs, so you can immediately re reapply them. But as you can see, damage output definitely pretty high up there. The Frenzy, of course, is worn off by now, but with all these little combinations, the amount of damage over time you can do is pretty respectable while providing hard support to all to everybody that you're dealing with. And as well, when everything is actually done, uh, let me actually just try to show this off here, you can you can open up with a pretty quick combo, still getting some damage in while the, uh, uh, while the, the charm debuff is on because you have a uh, about a two-second window. So you can actually do something like that and get a big boost to your damage for the last two abilities that you use. You know, coming out of your thing with a stun and a push away and then get right back into singing your songs in a group PvP situation. So for a support build, I have to say, I want to take this out on the, on the road and uh, see what it actually works like. Uh, you know, see how effective it is as an actual support build because this seems pretty darn fun. And as always, if you do hit level 55, if the level cap gets increased, we can expand what we have in Battle Rage and pick up things again, like Bond Breaker and so on. Um, one of the things I'd actually like to test with this build is whether or not Battle Focus and subsequently the parrying can still be done while you're playing a song. I'm not sure if songs actually count as a full channeled ability that prevents you from blocking or parrying or anything like that. So, something to test. Hope this uh, different take on these uh, this build was uh, interesting for you. I may be doing some more double take builds in the future if I find something interesting, but this was a heck of a lot of fun and I had never, I'd always wanted to try to get in some sort of a, you know, massive critical package here between occultism and songcraft and I think I may have finally found it, especially considering again the synergy between Frenzy and uh, Ode to Recovery. The fact that Ode to Recovery does not actually trigger when you're inflicting the dot from Frenzy is pretty crazy. So. There you have it. That is my look at this class, and I will see you guys next time.